all around the world, people want a ceasefire. Hamas and Israel have both rejected the UN resolution for a ceasefire. The, the suggestion is that anything that outsiders can do, anything you can do, is frankly hopeless. It won't work. Well, we're going to do what we can. I mean, we will see whether it bears fruit or not. I'd hope very much that we would have got a ceasefire by now. Um, it's not been possible. I think there are still real issues about what can be done to stop the the smuggling of the arms going into Gaza and then the opening of the crossing so that it could be proper humanitarian help and uh, Gaza can be reopened to the outside world on the other side of it. And at the moment, it, it seems to not be in a position where we're going to get the ceasefire we want, but we've got to carry on working for it. But we've got no option. But to do it must be really, really frustrating. I mean, you spend a lot of time there. A lot of other people, President Sarkozy, Javier Solana, the list is endless. Mm -hmm. If the Americans don't even vote for the ceasefire, they are the only ones with leverage, aren't they? They're the only ones who could stop this. Um, actually, I think the only thing that we're going to be able to do here is to find a basis to stop as soon as possible, and, and that's what we're trying to do. And then we've got to recognize there is a long-term problem here. Um, I mean, look, I've been saying for, for quite a long time now that even though we actually have made some progress on the West Bank, the strategy of making progress on the West Bank leaving Gaza to one side is not going to work because Gaza will not be left to one side. And there's only going to be one Palestinian state, Gaza and West Bank. And the central issue here is how you achieve Palestinian unity on the right. Well, terms. then you have to talk to Hamas, don't you? Um, you have to make it clear to Hamas and to the people of Gaza that there is a choice that faces them, that they can be part of a process which leads to a two-state solution, independent state of Palestine, secure state of Israel, um, or it's going to be as we are seeing the entire time, because if Israel feels its security threatened, they're going to take action. Uh, and so you've got to go right back to the fundamentals of this and ask what is the basis upon which there can be Palestinian unity in order that there be a unified negotiating process leading to a, an independent but, state. But you're talking about carrots and sticks, where all the Palestinians are seeing is the stick. Of course, which is exactly why we need a different strategy. It's got to be absolutely clear to people in Gaza and to Hamas that there is an alternative. But then you have to talk to them. I mean, well, quarantining Hamas has been a failure, hasn't it? Let me just make this point to you, because obviously I abide by the quartet principles. We don't engage with Hamas. And you can have a debate about whether that's sensible or not sensible. Just leave that to one side for the moment. There are people talking to Hamas. I mean, the Egyptians are talking to Hamas. Uh, the Syrians talk to Hamas. Other people talk to Hamas. Now, it's not as if it's impossible to devise a way in which we make this issue clear for people so that there is a, an absolute understanding there is a different way forward. But it will require, I'm afraid, not just choices by the international community and the Israelis. Hamas is going to have to make a choice. Right. But, but you know, they would see themselves as a democratically elected voice of the Palestinian people. They have been effectively quarantined. There are some signs that the incoming Obama administration may change that somewhat. They may talk to them. Some reports on that. Would you encourage them to do so? Um, I'm, as I say, I'm going to keep within our quartet principles. And, and but they haven't worked. Clear. That's, that's, that's well, what I'm suggesting. When you say that they haven't worked, People have been talking to Hamas and making it quite clear what the way through is. Now, my view is, in the end, as I say, of course, what is happening at the moment is absolutely appalling, the death and destruction and the, the innocent lives being lost. But the origin of this and the reason why, even if we get a ceasefire, we will be back in this situation again, is that we have to offer a way out where it is clear what happens if people choose the path of peace. And if they don't choose the path of peace, then frankly, whatever I say or anyone else says, we will be back right. in the situation. But you can encourage, as you well know from your own experience in Northern Ireland, you can encourage people to choose the path of peace if you offer them carrots and don't just Correct. offer them sticks. and that's what we should do, for sure. But let me just say, but I'm not saying that it's being just as safe.